Hello viewers, today I am going to show you how to manipulate a Collie's fracture and how to apply a cast in a proper manner. Now internal fixation and K wiring has become quite common and people are quite good at it. However, because of increased risk of uh, surgery, uh, the plastering technique uh, has now uh, long been uh, forgotten in my experience. So today I will show you how to manipulate a Collie's fracture properly and how to apply a cast. This is a 65 year old lady who had who is right hand dominant. You can see there is a fracture of distal radius. There is loss of radial height. There is loss of radial inclination. There is also loss of volar tilt. So our plan is to manipulate it and I will show you how to manipulate it properly. Whenever you are manipulating a Collie's fracture, you can do it in theater. Like today we are doing it in the theater because we want to look at the CRM images. Or if you are doing it in casualty, you can do it under hematoma block and I've already uploaded a video on hematoma block, how to uh, do a hematoma block and you can watch that. Now the first step is to disimpact the fracture. Now the fracture today, there is not a lot of dorsal displacement, but if there is dorsal displacement, what you need to do is to disimpact the fracture. And the way to disimpact the fracture is, uh, put one hand on the other side, put the other hand with other hand, just increase the deformity, applying the traction, and then trying to disimpact it. And this way, you will be able to get a fracture aligned in a better way. The other way to disimpact is just by longitudinal traction. And most times, the longitudinal traction will be fine. So the, I will, Nitesh will be my um, assistant and he will give a counter traction and I will be giving the traction. So I am going to hold the thumb and I am going to hold not all fingers, just two or three fingers and then we are going to lean on it. Now this is a very patient game. You need to be leaning on it for at least at least three to five minutes and majority of your job will be done. So we will be leaning here for three to five minutes and we will join you back once we are ready for the next step. So now the way to find out whether you have gained the length is by putting your fingers. So my index finger is on the ulnar side the index finger of the right hand is on the radial side. And you can see I have gained the length because um, both of them are, if they were like this, then I have not gained it here. It's going here, so I've gained the length. Now, next step will be reduction and I'll show you how to do it. Now, the two common displacements are dorsal displacement and radial displacement. So I'm going to slide my thumb right over the fracture site. And what I do is I will just palmer flex and then I will do just ulnar deviation and this way I will be able to hold the, I will be able to achieve the reduction. And the third step will be to hold the wrist in slight flexion, in pronated position and ulnar deviation. And the third step is to lock the fracture. Now, until you have locked the fracture, your assistant Nitesh is constantly applying the traction. Once you have locked it, he can let it go slightly, but I still prefer that some form of traction is still there. Once you have uh, disimpacted the fracture, you have reduced it and you have locked it, your next step will be to uh, check the position. Uh, if you are in an emergency setting, then you don't have this option. Uh, but if you are in theta setting, do check. Now, if you look at our x-rays, we have managed to gain the radial length. We have managed to gain the radial inclination and the volar angulation is I'm just about neutral, maybe slightly volar. So it looks acceptable to me. Now the next step will be to apply the plaster. And once you apply the plaster, then you have a role of your second assistant who will be holding the reduction while you apply the plaster. Now when we are applying the plaster, um, we have a counter traction um, Nitesh is doing here. And the traction, slight gentle traction is applied by Kushwant. Now forearm is pronated, so fracture is virtually lo uh, locked. And there is slight ulnar deviation as well. So you want to apply the plaster in slight ulnar deviation and slight flexion. You don't want to be giving too much flexion like this. This position or cotton loader position is not good and it leads to a lot of wrist stiffness. So the position is slight flexion and ulnar deviation. This is the position. So I personally prefer um, a cast rather than just a back slab if the swelling is not too much. And if you see here, the swelling is not bad here at all. So I will apply the cast, I will keep the patient 
uh, in the hospital and if necessary, I will bivalve it later if there is extensive swelling. Now, the other key is not to apply too much of plaster. So just probably two layers and that's it. And now next step will be to apply our plaster. Okay. So start applying the plaster while the traction is on. And once you have completed the plaster, then we will mold the plaster and I'll show you how I mold it. Plaster. So I'm using a four inch and that is what you should be using. And after each roll, just take the air out. Just take the air out after each roll. And I will complete plaster like this. I will use probably three or four four inch one and I will join you again when I am ready to mold the plaster. So now I have applied two uh, rolls of uh, four inch bandage. Now after this I will mold it and once I have molded it I will use one more layer just to finish it. So at this stage I am going to take over from my assistant and I am going to apply the forces to neutralize the deforming forces. So I am just going to put my hand here because this will help in correcting the radial displacement as well as dorsal tilt. So I'm just going to push this here on the ulna side and this down and with this hand I'm just going to mold it like this. So I'm applying a three point fixation. So with my right hand I'm correcting the dorsal displacement and the radial displacement and my left hand is just providing a counter traction in order to mold the plaster. And in this position, I will wait for plaster to settle down. So now if you see it, I have molded it here. You can see the pressure here. You can see the some depression here and you can also see some depression here. Now there is a saying that if your plaster is crooked or if it's wonky, then your bones are straight. And if your plaster is straight, then your bones are wonky. So the next step will be to check the position of reduction under C arm. So if you can see here, we have gained the length, we have gained the inclination. There is little bit of air. I would have preferred a bit better molding, but there is hardly not much air left. There is some ulnar deviation. And if you see the lateral, the reduction, now we have gained the volar angulation up to the neutral and there is some palmar flexion and you can see there is barely any air on the top. So that means we have molded the plaster well. And if you calculate the plaster index, it will come into an acceptable position. So the last is I'm just going to use few layers of plaster of Paris to give it some strength and also to give a good finishing to the plaster. So just apply some layer and then I'm just going to show you how I smoothen it up. So once you applied this, just again use your hand to make it smooth, as smooth as possible. And once you have the plaster starts to settle up slightly and it starts to become slightly more solid, then all you need is you invert the gloves, you dip it in the water and then stretch your glove and then just smoothen it out into a nice smooth finish. Now this plaster is going to stay with the patient for around six weeks. So just make it as tidy as possible so that it doesn't look clumsy. And in the end, I'm just going to trim this area to make the thumb free. And that is how you reduce a coolie fracture and apply a nice well-molded plaster. So this is how our plaster looks finally. So you should keep the thumb free. You should not uh, impale the thumb and your fingers should also be free to start the range of motion pretty much straight away. Now I'm going to keep this uh, patient in hospital for at least 24 hours for high elevation and if necessary, I will bivalve the plaster. But that is usually not necessary if patients follow the plaster instructions. So this was a demonstration on how to apply a police plaster and how to reduce it and apply a proper plaster. I'm sure if you follow the steps, you will be able to do a good reduction and apply a good plaster. Now the key is to avoid a cotton loader position and because that is detrimental to the wrist. I hope you like this video. Please do give us a thumbs up. Please do subscribe and do share our channel. Thank you.